Have you been thinking about doing some sort of kitchen upgrade? Maybe you just bought a new to you house or a new house, or maybe you're looking to do some little facelifting to maybe get a house ready to sell and looking for a really cost-effective, easy upgrade. We've got a really fun 15 minute upgrade for you today that's gonna make your kitchen, bathroom, or laundry area look amazing. There's a lot of data out there about home upgrades and how to get a really good return on your investment. What that means is how much are you gonna spend or how much work is it versus what's the real benefit? Is it perceptive benefit or uh, real benefit? This is one of those upgrades that really falls into the top category of high-end, high-class uh, homes, and that is lighting. One of the big opportunities in any house to improve the comfort and just genuine happiness or satisfaction in your home is more and better lighting. I want you guys to see how amazing a little bit of light in the right space can really change things up. So when we built this little kitchenette, we knew we needed some lighting because we live in an area where we get long winters and we spend a lot of time inside. Uh, what's funny is we actually use these features all year round, which just proves their versatility. So here's what we would have normally. We have some overhead lighting, but check out how amazing this small change is. So there's just a tiny bit of under cabinet lighting. And then we went ahead and put in one recessed LED over the sink. And how amazingly different is that from this? Now, if you're like most people, this type of technology could seem very intimidating, and that's what I wanna show you today. This is something you can do with pretty much no tools. You don't have to modify your kitchen at all, and it's gonna cost you probably under $30 to do this type of upgrade to your cabinets. So normally the under cabinet lighting technology that it professionals install requires a pretty substantial knowledge of low voltage and you're going to have to do some wiring in the walls and stuff like that. If you're willing to kind of forego some of the very minor aesthetics, you can actually use a plug and play model like this one. We actually purchased this at a big box store and they're just a complete kit. They come with a few lighting strips and they're fully customizable. They can be extended. And the best part of them is that they plug into a traditional outlet. And I'm assuming that if you have a cabinet, you probably have some sort of outlet nearby that you can utilize to power these things. They have a small rocker switch that's included and this allows you to kind of work independently. And that means that you don't have to install any kind of light switch in the wall or do any you know, kind of crazy wiring. As you can see, the profile of these LED strips is extremely thin and so they conceal very, very well. There's typically a small recess in the bottom of a cabinet that can be used to hide these and create this sort of underglow or backlighting and bounce the light off of the wall and it creates more of a mood light than it is a work light. But you can see how thin they are and how they can be applied almost anywhere very discreetly. If you take a look underneath your cabinets, a lot of times there'll be a small recess here where the bottom is moved up. And this is a great place to install these strips. They just adhere along the edge here and they kind of provide light, they cast light this direction or against the wall over here. And it's a very simple installation. So let's take these out of the package here and take a closer look at what's included. Okay, so what we have are the, in this case, with this particular product, the four LED strips. And they kind of have a foil backing to them and then they also have an adhesive on the back. And so we'll obviously remove that later. These actually can be trimmed to length. So if you need a very specific length, like let's say you have overrun and you don't really have anywhere to hide the, the extra, you can just um, make cuts, do follow the instructions. And then we have just a few extenders, doublers, and Y's, and this just allow a person to do numerous configurations. For example, you could go from one cabinet all the way over to another cabinet. Um, if you had one that was pretty far away, this is like an extension. And then there's like a short little extension here, and this is more used for like a double back. Like let's say you wanted to put two strips side by side, you can kind of just loop around and then continue it on. 
Uh, this is a Y junction, so if you wanted to bring power in here and then put two strips, you could do it that way. So they kind of think of everything and they give you lots of different ideas or ways to do stuff. And then, of course, this is what we call the wall wart. It's not particularly sexy, but this is really what makes this whole system so approachable is that it will work on any standard outlet. And then, of course, we just have a little rocker switch that we could um, conceal or hide, which would make it very easy to turn these on or off. And you know what? We actually leave ours on a lot. You might think that you would use the switch a lot, but you might turn them on in the morning and then turn them off at night. And then they include a small baggie of mounting hardware. These are small little uh, supports that actually hold or support the strips and then some small screws to fasten it all together. Probably one of the things that I would advise as the most important thing to do here is just test everything before you put all the work into getting this system installed only to find out that they don't work. So what we can do is go ahead and plug our wall wart in there and then we can plug in each strip and just test it. So what I'm doing now is just plugging in each strip here and that one works okay. There actually is a polarity to these and I can't remember exactly the instructions, but I think there's a little arrow on the connector and then each one has a little arrow on the tape strip itself. Looks pretty good. And I guess my recommendation would be obviously if there's any damage, I would just return it to the store. You don't want to install something that's damaged. Looks great. And last one. Looks great. Okay, so that testing out of the way, everything looks like it's functioning correctly. And so now we can kind of move on to making an installation strategy. So underneath our cabinet here, you'll see this small recess that runs along the edge. It actually runs along the face also, and then down the opposite side. It's a great spot to put this lighting strip. You'll see that it fits very nicely up in there and it's completely concealed. And when you stand above the cabinet, you won't be looking down into the light. It will very much be kind of creating this aura or glow underneath the cabinet. And so what we're gonna do is utilize this. Now, these pieces can be connected together, so you might be tempted to do a lot of cutting, but let me show you kind of how to create a strategy where you may not have to cut anything at all. So let's just take a tape measure really quick and we'll just get a ballpark. We do not need to be super precise. So in this case, um, if we had about 10 inches of light in the back corner there, that would be an amazing um, amount of light. And then let's just go ahead and measure across the front here. It looks like if we had maybe about 20, 22 inches. So we've got 10 and 10 and 22. So we need about 42 inches of light to go all the way around the um, edge of this cabinet here. So let's take a look at our strips. Looks like our strips are about 12 inches. They're very close, probably a little bit over. So if we needed 42 inches, this is going to provide 48 inches. So we're gonna come up six inches long. So we have two options. One, we can put three strips in, that would give us 36 inches. We're gonna be a little bit short. We might not notice the difference though, versus trying to get this last and final strip in here. Or we could go ahead and put all the strips together and then we could find a place where we can cut this fourth strip and we would have the perfect amount of lighting. So the instructions on this model say that we can cut anywhere on these little copper pads that actually um, kind of split the, the tape. Of course, you're gonna wanna make sure you cut the right side because there actually is sort of a female and a male into this, but that allows us to get within, it looks like we could probably get within a couple of inches of the perfect dimension. Okay, so we have a plan for kind of the length here. We're gonna aim for 42 inches. Let's go ahead and put in the maximum amount of light that we can. That's something, a tip that I'd like to share is that the, the answer is almost always more light. We have found that one of these lighting strips isn't really enough. So if you're thinking, oh, I'll stretch that four feet over a four foot cabinet, it will work. But we have found that doubling up on the strips really produces a nice glow. So the other, next thing that we wanna think about is, well, how are we gonna get power to the strips? So we actually did a small upgrade here when we wired this wall in because we knew we were gonna be putting this type of lighting in. This outlet is actually up recessed, and so we don't actually need to use this one, which we actually use for kitchen appliances, charging devices, and stuff like that. So this wall wart is gonna plug in up here, and you really don't even see it. It's completely concealed. And then we've got all this switching uh, hardware. So even though we have our own switch over here, we still have to leave 
all of this attached. So we'll just go ahead and conceal it all in the back of the cabinet. And then of course we've got plenty of cable run to reach the end of our lighting strip. Figuring all these little pieces out is not complicated. It just takes a little bit of thinking and you'll kind of find the route that makes the most sense from your outlet over to the beginning of the lighting strip. And again, you only have to reach the very beginning because each lighting strip powers the next lighting strip, either using some of the extender connectors or just connecting them to each other. One of the simplest ways we have found if you're gonna use a regular wall outlet like, like, outlet like this is to go straight up and then get underneath the cabinet. And now you have a lot of options to route the cable to wherever it needs to go. Okay, so we're gonna go to work here building our 42 inch lighting strip. Now, the important thing to remember is that the power cord is a female, which means that our lighting actually starts on the male end. So we're gonna consider this the beginning of our wire strip. And so let's connect these two together. There we go. So we have two of them connected together and now this will just act like one big long strip. Here, we can kind of show that. So now we'll move that down and then we'll connect the next one. And that should put us around 36 inches. Let's go ahead and pull a tape measure here. So we're at 38 inches and we want it to be at 42. So we actually only need to add about four inches. So let's kind of take a look at this strip here. And four inches would be about the second copper pad here, about right there. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this strip here and that'll get us right to 42 inches. So we're cutting from the male end here and we're gonna go to the second copper pad, which puts us right here. And using simple scissors from household tools, we can make that cut. And let's go ahead and attach that final light strip here. Okay, very good. So now we have our entire light strip Let's flip it around here and test it out. See if we have one, looks great. Got one nice continuous LED strip. All right, so what we wanna do is we probably wanna bring our power up over here towards the sink and have that start up in this upper corner versus having it out here kind of toward the walkway and things. So what we'll do is we'll take our tape off the back and we'll just start our power strip here and work our way around the inside of the cabinet and then we'll terminate somewhere over here on the other end. So this just has a double stick tape on it, small adhesive on the back. And coming to the end right there, perfect. So we're just a little bit shy of the corner there, which is okay, because we couldn't fit one more of these little copper pads if we wanted to. Okay, we've gone all the way around the inside now. We left our small uh, power connection over here. And the important thing there is don't pinch it too tight in the corner. It doesn't need to be tight. It needs to just kind of radius around the corner, nice and gentle. Okay, and let's just do a double check here before we get too invested. I think testing along the way is just a good idea because you never know what you might bump that will cause a problem. All right, that's looking really good. Super simple installation. And as you can see in this case, we're not going to be needing to use any of the extenders or adapters or anything like that, which is one of the nice things about this installation method is it's very lean and clean. It keeps things very tidy and organized. So what we need to do now is think about what are we gonna do with this kind of gangly switch? Now, normally, like I said, you might try to put this switch maybe in the upper corner here and attach it. Uh, we can talk about how to do that and then you could simply turn your under cabinet lighting on and off. And I think that's what makes this stuff so easy to use is that it's all kind of compartmentalized and it, it it's works in isolation. You don't need a bunch of sophisticated wiring to make it work. So what I think is probably the easiest way to secure wire and things like that is to buy these little double stick mounting bases. You can get them off Amazon, big box stores. And all they are is a double stick tape base and they allow you to run a small zip tie up through and secure something. And they're commonly used for cable, um, you know, telephone wire, things like that. 
So just remove the double stick tape, place it where you want, and then you can slide a small zip tie through the base here, attach whatever wire you want here, loop it around and clamp everything. And this way you don't even need any tools to do this type of mounting. And I think these are probably under $5. So they're probably the lowest intrusion, least amount of damage, and no tool method of securing these extra pieces of wire. So to keep everything out of the way for us, I think we're just gonna go ahead and put that switch in this back corner. That way it doesn't interrupt with the paper towel holder. And you know, it's kind of dead space. It's not space we really use anything, that we don't put anything over there. And so we can just coil everything back up the way it was before. So we talked about um, how to hide this in our case. And I think this corner over here is sort of some dead space. We don't really use it for anything, it's not in the way. You know, we don't, it's just, it's area that's not gonna intrude on the paper towel holder. So it really do put some thought into this. As you can see, you could just run this switch same thing, you could kind of conceal this wire and run this switch out front and mount it using those same double stick pads and a couple of zip ties. You know, unless you're really hard on stuff, it's gonna have no problem holding on to this switch. So if we were to mount this kind of in this upper corner, something like that, you can see this wall wart is hidden up here, our switch is hidden, and everything is gonna work perfectly. So we'll just go ahead and put our double stick uh, plate up here and then zip tie everything together. All right, looking very tidy. And we just used, we did a little trick here. We actually used two zip ties because one wasn't quite long enough to go around. So we just connected two and we've got our little double stick base right there. And that's super light. It's not gonna see any use. So it'll be just fine right there. And that's really it. I mean, come on. That's the simplest, most affordable upgrade you can get and have this extra bonus in the kitchen or bathroom or laundry room. I feel like anywhere where you work, extra light, you know, especially if you're getting older, maybe your eyes aren't working as well, things like that. This is a very simple upgrade that beats glasses, you know, beats a lot of these things, reduces eye strain. And you know what? Fair warning, you may find yourself spending more time in your favorite spaces. So we've got one done, but you see we've got two cabinets. And instead of trying to span from here to there, and deal with wire, we simply bought two units. And again, if you have outlets, you can put in lights. So we'll get the second light put in here, and this project is a wrap. So we've got about 10 inches would be good, 10 inches, and in this case, we're only going to be uh, 14 inches. And 10 and 14 is 34. So we should be able to do it with three strips and have one strip left over. like everything tests out really good. So we wanted 34 inches. And this looks like it's 38, which works out good because we can just make a cut here and we're cutting the female end. Done. Beautiful. Well, what do you think? It looks amazing and it's so simple and it doesn't really matter whether you need the light or not, it's whether it's enjoyable or not. And I'll tell you what, I haven't been in a single place with under cabinet or accent lighting where I haven't thought to myself, you know, there's something different about this place. And this is amazing. So this side probably took me less than five minutes. Very, very simple to do. We did have to use a small 
uh, trick. I'll show you that in just a second to secure the switch because I don't have any more of those little double stick pads, although I think that's really the way to go, but there are other options. You can see that if you were to mount the switch here, you could very easily just turn your lights on and off unless you have 50 of them, of course, which could be a pretty crazy deal. But you know, it might be worth it in the morning to turn all of your lights on. This is something where sometimes if we just want to have a little bit of light, we actually turn this overhead light off, which is more for work. And we just leave these lights on. It's just a pleasant mood. Sometimes we use them for a night light. This is a small tip I can give you also in case for some reason you're not able to find the little double stick pads. This is a zip tie that has a screw hole in the end of it. So you don't have to do anything special. Uh, these are called cable ties and you can buy them at big box stores, uh, maybe even on Amazon. They're very affordable and I'll tell you, they're super handy for all kinds of stuff. And so the same thing, you can just loop this around your wire and then you can run a small screw. There's one word of caution though, be careful with the screw depth on this. That's what's challenging about this method is that the depth of your cabinets is probably not much. And so you're gonna have to find a pretty small screw to do the fastening. So if at all possible, go the double stick route versus this. So that's pretty much it. If you're looking for something that only costs you a few bucks, but will make your home look or even sell or feel like a million bucks, I don't think you're gonna beat this for value. I hope you'll give it a look. There's a lot of ways to purchase these things. Probably start with somewhere local in case you need to get help. But if you're a confident DIYer, you can probably buy them online. And there are many, many kinds. So really think about your skill level when purchasing this stuff. You can get everything from the raw components and kind of build your own and get fancy. Or you can just leave all that stuff to the professionals and go with something like this that's like a solution in a box. I really don't think you're gonna regret it.